Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and a really common question I'm getting asked nowadays is to do with bridges on ukuleles that are not a tie-on bridge or a pin bridge. The other type that's very common is this new design like the one seen on this snail here where the ukulele string goes straight into a hole and then seemingly disappears. What I thought today I would do is just quickly go through how you do this and how you would change the strings on a snail ukulele. So I'm going to slacken the strings off here and in fact actually to save a bit of time today I'm just going to cut these strings and then we're left here with the four strings so let me feed these through and the only way to do this really is just to feed the string straight into the body until you can reach the end of the string and you'll see that two of these strings are gone already the other two are a bit harder to reach. But the crucial thing here at the end is that Snail, when manufacturing the string, have put a ball end on the string. I'll just try and focus on that for you if I can. And that is just a ball end like you would get on a steel string guitar. And it's just knotted on, so you can cut that ball end off. I'll do it not over the ukulele directly get the ball end cut off and we're going to save that for the next string we put on but you don't actually need the ball end to do this job you can do this just by tying a knot in the string in fact that's what I'm going to do so if you're not going to use the ball end method as I've decided not to do today, you would take the end of the string, like so, put it into the ukulele and feed it through considerably until you can pull it out of the sound hole with your finger. And then what I would do is have the string kind of half in half and half so that it's 50-50 out of the instrument and 50-50 the other side and then just leave that for a moment and fit the other strings. Let's get my third here. Just put that in the hole. Now, a neat trick and something that makes this a little bit easier is to turn the string from the outside of your finger like you're un undoing a bottle, something like that, and the actual natural curve in the string will find the sound hole. I think that's probably the thing that makes people think this is a harder job and it's the kind of it's one of those silly tricks until you do it the first time you'd never think of it but this, this string has a natural curve in it so if you see as I turn it it will loop so if I start with the direction I mean to use when I feed it through the hole it should head in the right direction but if it doesn't I'll just turn it a little bit more and there it is straight out the hole so 50 50 on that one and then the final string the B string or the E string I should say it's just there like that so all of these strings are now 50-50 in the hole. So the final step now is tying the knots. I had a little interruption there. I'm taking up all the workbench space. So this bit does get a bit confusing when you're doing four at the same time. I personally would normally just do one, but let's find the end of the knot for my the end of the string for my G. So I've got that now. And you would need to tie the double knot into the string. If you've got the ball end, that's the point to put it in. And then once you've got that first knot, I just do another one. It doesn't need to be pretty because it's not going to be on show. Once you've got a nice big knot on there, pull the string through, and that's good. We'll do the same thing again on the C. So as I'm losing these, you'll notice I'm just pulling a bit on the string from both ends till I find them. 
So we do that double knot again. And then we pull tight. And then we've got our E string. It's a little bit fiddly. But after two or three times of doing this, I, you actually might find it quite relaxing like I do. Okay, so I've got my double knot there. And then on the thinner strings, you definitely want to do a second series of knots just to thicken the width out so that it can't come through the hole. And then my last string is the C string here. I'm not doing this in any, any particular order. I uh, just did them as I found them apart from the first string. Okay, tie that double knot. And pull. Okay, and then we're going to put them out of our way and pull them all to pitch. So if you're restringing a ukulele for the first time, you've got your bit of information here about the bridge, but I did a video not too long ago where I explained step by step how to attach the strings at both ends on a traditional ukulele. And I strongly suggest that if you're doing this for the first time, you check that out. I am kind of fast forwarding through today because the main question anyone watching this video should have is how you do this bit here. Okay, so as my strings are getting up to pitch now, I'm just going to cut some of these wires, or these strings at the top, I should say. So I'll try and leave a little bit at the edge and then clean it up at the very end because if you do do something wrong along the way, you need as much string as you can to rectify the problem and you can very quickly waste and have to throw away a string for silly reasons and I have done that countless times over the years. Okay, let's tune this one up to pitch and we'll see how we go. Okay, so the ukulele is in tune now and um, we'll take this tape off very carefully. You don't want to leave masking tape on too long or you will get a problem, but if you leave it on for an hour or so it should be absolutely fine. Yes. There you go. Perfectly in tune. Looks just as clean as it did at the beginning there. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call on 01202 430820 or you can email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. Um, I hope that helps anyone there with a snail needing to do a restring. I'm sorry if it's a bit rushed in places. Happy to help uh, if you have any questions once again. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you soon.